Alrighty then. Instead of a live stream today, we're just going to record. We're finishing up our journey to Sagittarius A. We're in Elite Dangerous, and we'll be doing a little more uh, live streaming of the game at a later date. There's a lot more to do. Uh, from Sagittarius A, we're going to be going back to the bubble, and I'm going to be, hopefully I'll have the cash from all the scanning data to get a anaconda. Uh, I may also pick up a... Uh, what was it called? For what? The ship that you have that has like a really insanely long jump range. Well, the one I'm currently using that I've done that in is a Diamondback Explorer. I don't know if an Astro Explorer can be outfitted for that long, but my little Diamondback has 55 light years on it. Yeah. Jump range, so. Oh, so, that's engineered from, and I've got the engineer for that. So that's engineered. It can't do anything else but travel, so. Oh, yeah. So everything on my end is going to look a little wonky because I am still getting it to work properly. Oops. There it goes. Come on, behave. I am using the no IR head tracking software and it is acting a little wonky on me. What you gotta get him out of it. You need to learn how to configure it. Is, I'm not sure what all those different options do. Well, that's where you find that thing and look it up. Gotta be some explanation out there to smooth that out. A good guide or something somewhere? Yeah, it's gotta be. You can see here, it finds my face. It tracks my face, but... Like I have to sit real... Uh, lose this track of my face. You know I'm right in front of it. Not sure why here. the number of samples. Ah!
to Ray. I think. Fifty and I it was at five hundred and I turned it down to ten. Um, probably put it maybe somewhere. Maybe try try uh try maybe uh eighty or ninety. See what you get. Mm -hmm. What was the first number you said? Five hundred. No, it was fifty. Sorry, it was fifty. Oh. I put oh. it down to um, ten. Um. Try fifteen or fifteen to twenty. I'm gonna try something else. Whoa, 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 I'm drifting. I almost, I'm, oh, my throttle was up. I almost drifted right into you. My throttle was up when I was playing with the SRV. Okay, that's more controllable. It's still a little jerky. <laughs> I almost ran you over. It's still a little, <laughs> little bit jerky moving around. Try adjusting a little more. There's probably a sweet spot somewhere. It's the detection of my face. It's jerking around a lot. It probably needs calibration with that. Some kind of sensitivity, too. Yeah, the thing is, there's no controls on that. The... Look at that again. Filters. I'm not going anywhere. I'm just going to hover. Track of it. 
markings around my face alter from time it makes me like I'm jerking my head around. on in case I do something accidental. My shields were on. Your shields are down. We've been parked for a long time, I guess. Hi. Oh, you know what? I had my shields off to keep heat down. Yep. Whoa! Um, I wanted to think something to go forward. I don't know. My throttle's all the way back. That actually made me move. <laughs> yes, it can. Accelerating. It's not moving forward. What's the 
gravity on this planet. Um. The gravity is uh, point three. No, point nine four G. Okay, that's why I'm having a little bit of trouble holding still. Hmm. I was trying to split the fighter dock, but I was having trouble holding still. That should not be causing me to. That should not be causing my ship to move forward. Uh, light throttle. Hold still. This won't hurt a bit. When I need to be above you. Are you on the ground or are you in the air? I'm in the air. Flip over. Or at least get some altitude. You're too low. I'm going to wind up blowing the limpet up. All right, I'm upside down. The environment is so. Oh, I'm boring. dropping. Whoa. Okay, don't flip over. <laughs> <laughs> Just um, hold still. Just hold still. Yeah, we're uh, we're gravity's a little high on this planet. That's that's why we're moving. Is this gravity's a little higher than what we're used to? Damn repair limit. I'm gonna gain a little more altitude here. Incoming repair limit. Don't move. No, I'm not moving. Repair limit engaged. Okay, it got you. All repaired. <laughs> away from this planet because its gravity is driving me nuts. I'm going to get into orbit. All right. I'm going to get into space anyway. Mm -hmm. I have to change that key. Centers. Centers because it's triggering my triggering my, um... Where are we? Landable here. up here. Huh. Mama. 
software is so slow. Why is Logitech software so bad? In VR F12, in, in Elite, it's assigned to reset the headset centering. So maybe you can borrow the same key if you need it. That key. Me, need to make sure that that key was not by anything. That's okay. Fix that problem. All right. Yes. Frame shift drive, yes. Beams, cannons, repair limpets, heat sink launcher, in case of emergency. Okay. It was taking its sweet time getting away from the planet. It's because it's uh, one, almost 1G, one so yeah. yeah. Alright, there we go. system and route I know. <laughs> I can always edit. I'm on. Right. Ah, that's the key. Alright. I just have to remember what key it was. Alright, I have to 
bring up the... Whoa! I've got that set. Okay. All right. Come on. Here we go. You ready? Oh, wait. Hold on. Drop out a super cruise. This is from a uh, standing still position. I'm thinking and other stuff with this. Get this head tracking properly. It is working. It just work right. Yeah. 
the ship control. I have ship control to the camera view. Yeah. Trying to exit. <laughs> All right. Okay. Just stay. Just stay put. I'm gonna come back around. All right. I gotta figure out which way you're facing again. Okay. Uh, I am, I actually slightly, just barely slight, that mic is so good, I can barely slightly hear myself over your headphone. You're kidding. Every once in a while, I'll hear myself. I think picked up everything. <laughs> yeah. Are I you moving? I think the switch on the mic... No, I'm not moving. I'm completely, uh... Okay. It's my momentum. I think the switch on the on your mic... Because, uh, um... He's got, uh... He's got that Ant Lion mod mic now. Which is... Which attaches to a standard, you know, regular pair of headphones. It's not like these. This... My um, Logitech G35, where it's a boom mic that's permanently attached. Yours is connected with a magnet. There's a mounting base, and then you, you know, there's a magnet that holds it. You get a Sennheiser headphones. But I think the switch that's on the mic, I don't think that's a mute. I think what that is, is that's a switch between Omni and, um, Cardioid. I don't know, I'd have to read the book. Yeah. Okay, are we ready? Cardioid only hears sound from one direction. I gotta remember how to do that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Charging. And... Three. Well, wait, wait, let it charge. Ready. Ready. Wait, tell me when you're charged, okay. Charged. Three, two, one. <laughs> that was cool. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I gotta get. I was trying to adjust my system here a little bit. big ship again. They definitely yeah. feel different than the little ones. Oh, yeah. Oh, that little noise. Me resetting the forward screen. Oh, you're jumping? Hey, let's see how many jumps we have left. 25. Oh shit, because this one can do good. I looked earlier, it was 22. Wow. So, you gotta get a better ship. <laughs> yeah. Well, in theory, this will get you your anaconda, though there may have been better ways to get an anaconda than this. Because I can make 10 mil, and I can make 10 mil. Mm. About maybe half an hour, so 20, 10 to 20 mil an hour average. Yeah. So, I've learned a lot since I've been playing it. Wow, this turned slow. Man, I got used to my little diamond back. 
Maybe keep it for just exploration only? I don't know. Maybe. Because the other I'm one's not be, been it. So I'm going to be getting an anaconda and uh, probably also a... Uh, I thought about getting an A... The other, a peep for getting the name. Not the ass. Keep forgetting the name. Or the Diamondback. Diamondback. I keep forgetting that name. Um, think of think of getting a Diamondback Explorer because. Crane drive charging. You need to be getting a really good speed out of it. I think you can get it. I think you can get it out there. But you gotta remember that Diamondback can't do as much though. Yeah, yeah. You can't hold it. You can't hold it. It's, I'm not carrying any cargo. I'm literally. I have no cargo space. It's not meant for that. It's, it's only meant as a. It's basically. I'm, I am using it as a long range shuttle. That's essentially what I'm using it for, to get around the bubble. If I need to do a long trip, I will take it and then have my other ships transported to my location. That's how I do it. So I'll use it to get there quickly. So my problem is my destination needs a shipyard. Yeah. Otherwise, I ain't doing much. The advantage of these other ships is you can carry what you need. The advantage of that little one is more of the bubble because I need a shipyard at my destination. Yeah. Anyway, give me half a second. Let me see it. Let me see what I can get. A let me do a quick run through on what I might be able to get a um, Aspect Explorer up to. Let's see what I can get for max range. Let's see for an Aspect right Explorer. Now, look, right now, my Aspect Explorer does my. Right now I'm 35.28. 37 on right on everything else. Grim shift drive 5A, modifications, increased range. Let's do a, uh, let's see, D, 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 uh, advanced scanner, clean everything else out. The maximum theoretical possible for an ASP Explorer, 5D, 5D, frame shift, 4D, 4D, 5D, 5C, um, nothing else, 49, 49 is the cap. But how in the world did I get, well, let me do a diamond back. Let's, let me compare this to a diamond back. So my diamond back theoretical maximum uh, let's see, uh, let's see, Diamondback Explorer. Okay, let's do the same basic thing. So D rate, D rate, frame ship 5A. You know what, it's got the same engine, but it's a smaller ship. That's why it's getting more range. Uh, because it's got the same size engine, it looks like. Yeah. But it's a smaller ship. So D rate, D rate. Let's just throw an advanced scanner in there just for something. Clear, 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 clear. Wow, the max I can get on this is 55. I have it at, I have a Diamondback at its absolute maximum. 55 wow. light years. Now, an Anaconda with the same configuration. Uh, let's see. Uh, cause they're supposed to be the well, longest I've heard Anaconda in the game. is supposed to be able to do 60. Yeah, hold on, let me check it. You might have to do some crazy engineering to get that though. Yeah. Where you're literally going lightweight on everything. So if you just strip down, I'm doing strip down max theoreticals. That's all I'm doing. Okay, frame shift drive. It's got a 6A engine. Increased range best. These are theoretical max anyway. Power distributors, sensors. It says 46, but I know I have somehow. Oh, you know what it is? I think you need to downgrade some components. So let's say. 60, 60, I can only go down to five, power distributor 70, 8D, about 52. Wow, I thought I had this up to 60 one time. You know what, you gotta do some other crazy engineering to get it up there. Hmm. You're gonna have to go lightweight and do a bunch of other mods. 
but just the most simplistic, and it's easiest to get a Diamondback Explorer up to the fastest. Yeah. It kind of comp- it kind of is in the same territory as a um, Anaconda, and Asp Explorer is definitely slightly under that. But that means that 55 on that at that Thanks. Diamondback is really good. That's an insane range on that thing, then. You probably have to do like lightweight components and other stuff in order to squeeze those extra light years out of it. Mm, yeah. But that takes a lot of work because some of those components you got to get a lot of engineering unlocked. But as a simple, cheap, very high jumper, a, probably a Diamondback. You just can't carry as much. You get more utility out of a um, ass, though. Yeah. That Diamondback will get you there, but you're not going to do much, and it can't repair itself or much anything else. So there's a more risk involved in it, whereas an ass is going to get you from point A to point B and have a little room to wiggle on stuff. Yeah. And Anaconda's just cruise liner. You're just you're bringing everything with you. <laughs> well, like I said, with the Diamondback, it is literally, it has nothing much to it. It's, literally, there's nothing much to it. So it's like, it's got, a, it's got a, it, it's got, you know, shields and scanners and SRV, but it doesn't, it doesn't even have any room for cargo. So the SRV is only good for... Now, it does have... I did put a wake scanner on it. it it's the ship I use when I'm looking for upgrades for um, frame shift drive upgrades because it's good at that. Yeah. It's where I needed to go, do all the scanning, get in there, get out, do the scanning. It's really good at that. You know what? You That's should be... You, you were talking about earlier that you were going to... Uh, get about live streaming more. I think you should because you were you were hyper addicted the other day. Yeah, it uh, was the first time that ever happened. <laughs> but most of my time is spent just flying from point A to point B. I mean, I found like three systems that I've been sort of doing laps in, and I've kind of worked up the reputation. And one of the stations is 500k from its star. Yeah. So what that lets me do? I'm sorry. Yeah. No, 500,000k from its star, so missions that go to it pay out more. And most of those are one-way missions, so I literally go there, pick a bunch of missions up, go to my second system, drop a lot of that off, and pick stuff up for that system, and then I pick up stuff for the next system in the loop, go there, pick up even more for that, and then drop those off, and then I make the 40-minute flight out to the location where everything's at, pick up uh, about 10, 15 mil worth of uh, missions, and then I start the loop all over again. That's mostly what I've been doing. I've been trying to get that built up. But it's been helping me make a little bit of money, and it's not too long, and that kind of long trip sort of gives me a chance to take a break, except for when I'm getting interdicted. So I've not been doing as much else, but it's an alliance, or not alliance, but an imperial system. I'm already like rank of knight there. So I'm like, like, not like, I'm about half, I'm like uh, 40% through the imperial rank. So I'll be able to get the empire up. So there are so many factions that are um, imperial rank. It's a good balance between Passenger missions that pay two or three mil for a one-way stop. Normally, you got to do a long, long, um, long, um, what do you call it? Uh, tourist sightseeing mission to get two or three mil. Yeah. I can get two or three mil per run, and that's just a one-way delivery mission. That's it for about a 30, 40 minute flight. And I can stack up two or three of them on the ship I'm currently using. I've got a, right now I'm just using a, a dolphin. I'm just doing that in a dolphin. I eventually want to get up to a bigger passenger mission and pick up more of those okay, at a so time. Okay, so you've got a dolphin now. Yeah. Uh, I, what I did is, my, my uh, what I did is I have two type sixes. Where are you at? Hold on. I've got, oops, I think it'll work. There it goes. 
Um, I've got two type sixes. One was a pat. One was rig for pasture, and the other was cargo. Yeah. But when I picked up the dolphin, I reconfigured the uh, passenger passenger type six as a mining vessel, and went out and tested it, did some engineering on it, and I got it really good now. <laughs> Let's put it this way: there's so much equipment on it. If I didn't have the engineering, I couldn't even turn the ship on. <laughs> Without that overcharged power plant, that ship would not even operate. Wow. But with the engineering on it, with the engineering I've done to it, I can now fire the mining beams continuously, nonstop. Now, I had a dolphin. A dolphin's a good little ship. I like it. I, I do want to upgrade it to an Orca. I don't want to do that run with a beluga because there's too many small stations. There's, there's too many small stations in my loop that would cut down on a lot of it. But a but a but an orca would be a good runner for that area. Yeah. Because it's got a lot of dedicated passenger cabins, so an orca would do really really good. Yeah. But what I've been doing on my man, what I've been doing on my other account is I've been literally my goal is literally to buy every single ship in the game. <laughs> I did notice something funny. Um, I don't know if it was there before, and maybe I didn't notice it, but the Coriolis IO um, now shows the requirement to purchase the ship at the top of the screen. Maybe that was there and I didn't notice it, but I did notice that that's there now. I don't know if that's a new feature or if that was just done from everybody going, hey, I want a Cobra Mark IV. I can't get oh, a Cobra Mark IV. Yeah, tell everybody about that. Well, what happened was, or the, um, well, that's not, well, what happened was they went to go get a cover mark for it and was doing all the engineering, went from point A to point B, point D to point C, and I'm looking for this stupid thing, I can't find one. And after about maybe two or three hours, I'm like, okay, where is this stupid thing? Find to go online, do some searches, discover, oh, yeah, you can't get this without having been got it at a certain time or something. A lot of people say it's not a good ship. I looked at spec and said, well, it looks like it would make a good mining vessel. Mm -hmm. so, like you said, uh, it, had, it had all the right, it had all the right slots to be able to yeah, build all, all the, the right equipment. Yeah, for a mining ship. Yeah, it would have made a good miner. And all you the only right get it if you pre-ordered the game. Uh, a little more than pre-order, but... They ought to make it so you can purchase it. I mean, it's it's a ship. It, it's another ship. It should be it should be purchasable. It's been I long mean, enough you, now that it shouldn't be a pre-order slash um, I mean, Kickstarter. If it, everybody who owns it says, yeah. I mean, everybody who owns it says it's not even that great a ship. So if it, if the ship has pretty much been removed. And I won't say it's been removed. But it's been the equivalent of removed in terms of the people who have it don't fly it, and the people and everyone else can't get it. So where are you going to see it at? Yeah. That's it. I mean, the people who you can't sell it to anybody because this game doesn't have that. Even the, the people who have it don't fly it. Then who cares? Mm. It doesn't exist. So why don't you add it back into the game as a ship for everyone else to use? Even if you put it on the store, then that makes it fair, in my opinion, because then anybody who really wants it, who's doing what I'm doing and collecting all of them, who didn't even know the game existed at the point they were offering it, you know, didn't even know, didn't even know Elite was a thing yeah. at the time. I didn't learn about it until I got into VR because I was looking for a good VR game. And this is one of them popped up. But, um... But essentially, what they could do is to put it in the store and allow you to purchase it just like everybody else did. So, for example, if I want to support Elite Dangerous in its development, in its future ongoing development, right? Isn't that yeah. what, I mean, it was a thank you to them, but they still had to sort of pay for it because I had to buy the game. Yeah. At a specific time, there was a specific requirement. So to me, this sort of balances it out to say, why is there this whole section with no stars? Are you seeing this? It was brightening up. It's just a dust cloud, but it's got no... There's no stars here. 
or there's very few. Or it's just too bright to see them. Or this dust cloud's really thick. Yeah. We are, Where are we? Uh, we are 11 jumps away. Oh, wow. Let me, okay, well, to, let me slow down and switch to camera. Maybe it's the density. It is so dense that there's so much gas. Wow, it, it is uniform all the way around. The line of the ga the, ga the galactic line. It's uniform all the way around. It, you know what? You know what? It 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 it's light. It's I'll, I'll, it, it's sort of what the equivalent of light pollution. There's so yeah. much light that everything's so illuminated that it's causing the dust to be lit up and obscuring the very thing that's lighting them up. Yeah. Alrighty then. How many light years is it to the destination? How many light years? Yeah. How far is it still? Uh, ah, shit! Ah! Buggers! I just popped one of my... God damn it. Sure. There's 11 shit. jumps, though. I just popped one of my damn heat sinks. Let yeah. me turn that off. How many of them do I have left? Hold on. I should have left it off. I've got one left. Can I make any more of those? Nope, I got one left. Huh. I'm turning that sucker off and I'm leaving it off. <laughs> and I may need it here in about 11 jumps. And I only got one left. Mm -hmm. Frack! In the words of Battlestar Galactica, Frack! Frack! <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to see if I could get a on, measure of... Because I wanted to see how quickly my little... I was trying to get an estimate on how my little... What you call it can do it. Let's see, how far is it now? It is 350. So that would be uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. That would be seven jumps. How many jumps do we have? Eleven. My my little uh, what you call it, Diamondback, could probably do that in about six to seven. Huh. All right then. Because if it can do a fifty and it's three hundred and fifty, then it would be about. Give or take, depending on the star's availability, probably about six to seven jumps from my little my diamond back. Yeah. As opposed to 11. So yeah, that adds up after, when you think about that over a course of a long trip, that adds up quickly. Uh-huh. I can get across the bubble in about six, about, mm, depending on which angle and which side. Six to ten jumps across the entire bubble. Wow. California Nebula is, um, the California Nebula is only 20 jumps for me. Because I went to an asteroid base, but I couldn't do anything there because it didn't have a shipyard. Have we been bothering to look for, I don't think there's much Earth-like out here, are there? I don't think Earth -like so. Earth-like water. I know I you've been scanning. I haven't really I've been, been looking. -scanning. I've been de-scanning, but that's about it. Yeah. You still get money for those. Turn. I don't think there's as much out here, though. Yeah. We're getting closer and closer to the center. Mm-hmm. How well can you hear me on the on this system? With the, with very the good. The I can hear you very good on, uh, on this. That mic is picking you up really well. It's That's a good mic. I mean, Aunt Maya and Mike are good mics. It's probably a good thing I'm using a headset with, otherwise it'd be picking the game up. Yeah. You know what I should probably try to go back and do is, uh, well, my problem is my dictation can sometimes be off, so the way I say words can be a little weird. 
I don't have an yes. accent. I just my mouth doesn't move as fast as my brain needs it to go. Your diction. Sometimes my sometimes my, my diction can sometimes dictation dictation can uh. sometimes be a little wonky. So sometimes I don't say it correctly in a way that the voice attack would want. But I should try voice attack again and see if it doesn't do better. Oh, voice attack should pick you up just fine with that. Could you over Discord? You sounded really clear. And I, what I like about it is it's just the right size and it's just the right shape with these headphones that if you didn't, if you couldn't see the little hip of glue sticking out the side, you would be mistaken for thinking that it was part of these headphones. With the exception of this wacky engineering job we did on the cord. <laughs> Yeah. The good thing though that they came with that um, that wrap. That helped. That helped. It gets a little cumbersome, but it did a pretty good job of getting this under control. It's a little bulky, but it's nothing that can't be managed. Yeah. If it wasn't for that little spot at the end, on each end in the middle, you would almost think it was how it was made. Considering they're, they're, they're two completely different products, they actually went together fairly well. Yeah. They went together fairly well. It took some assistance. <laughs> but uh, they, actually, they actually went together fairly well. is I can get the Amazon link and you can use it as kind of a make recommendation and we didn't need your other extension cords so everything you need sort of comes with it yeah because we didn't use any external stuff everything that I use except for the um, ties and the um, except for the ties and the velcro to kind of help tie it down a little bit better everything I needed came with it yeah just something to kind of lock the ends down where they stick out of the uh, cable that was just to hold together but you know, with a little bit of Velcro or even just bread ties, you can hold it down pretty good. Mm -hmm. So what I could do is I could get the ordering things and you can use that as a recommendation of a good, good combination. Yeah. They sound, the headset sound good. The mic is good quality. So between the two of them for the price, what was it? I think it's, 70 total, 60, yeah. 70 total for the whole thing. Yeah, because you, um, you have a pair of Sennheiser headphones. They're not the Sennheisers can go from price from thirty to five hundred and up. I think yours is not quite that high. No, these are like sixty, fifty, sixty. Yeah. And they the can be I have to go back in. Let's see, but as a as a cheap, uh, you know, alternative. Let's see, uh, what did I pay for these? Total the order was from Amazon. Uh, these delivered today. Okay, okay. So no, okay. So the headphones were forty nine. The mic was sixty. Wow, the mic was more than the headphones. Yeah, the the mic's a little the mic's a little pricey. The antlion mics yeah, are a little pricey. HD or HD two dot ten ear headphones. Antlion audio mod mic, E5 modular attachable boom microphone. The order total from Amazon was one twenty nine seventy nine. Yeah. But that's not too bad for that. Mm -mm. I mean, given that I'm not a, sure what you could. Given that a pair of head, given that a good pair of headphones would cost you about that much. Yeah. I mean, you might find some gaming headsets that are in that price range that might be decent, but eh. Yeah. I mean, I use these. These are Logitech G35. They work. I know what I like about these is they don't feel heavy. The physical feeling of them when they're on my ears is the same thing thing I feel when I'm wearing my, my, my headset, my Vive headset, without wearing the rest of the headset. The way they're on my ears, now see, now here's the difference. I like the on the ear type of, you know, where they're resting on your ears type of headphones. Yeah. That's just me, a lot of people don't like that. I don't like them when they cover your whole ear because it makes me too hot. I don't, I don't vent well. Yeah, I like the I, I, over ear ones better. Yeah, I don't. 
Yeah. Now, see, people are different on that. A lot of people have different different things than what they like. Yeah. You know, for me, I don't. For me, I don't like those types. At least not as much. I like these a little bit more. You know, now they do. You know, push on the ear a little bit, and some people are resistant to that. So. Five jumps. Really? Yep. Only five jumps. Almost there. Yep. Almost there. Almost there. Almost a Sagittarius A. the fact that the top is really thin is they're they're really lightweight even with the microphone on it and this big cord they don't feel heavy i like that even with the microphone on one side you can tell it's a little lopsided to one side but it's not enough that it actually bothers me it holds good enough that it doesn't really bug me so I, I'm actually, I'm actually liking them. Okay. Come on, you big whale, spin around. <laughs> Great ship drive charging. Big ship. Yeah, I got used to flying little ones. You know what's funny though? The amount of space taken up by the by the bow. When I was in the Imperial, not the Imperial Leaguer, but the Imperial, was it the Courier? We made a weird swooping. We did a weird thing. There's <laughs> a few seconds. What's ago. that? Your ship just went whoosh, 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 like swooping. That was weird. Uh oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, I spun around a little bit. I, I had done a weird thing because it. But anyway, the Imperial Courier takes up almost as much space on your screen as the Anaconda does. In fact, it takes up you see even less. Huh. Because the way the cockpit is shaped, you're sitting sort of in a bucket. Okay. It's kind of weird. You'd have to see it. When I initially saw it, I thought it was what, I didn't know what an Imperial Eagle looked like and I thought it was an Imperial Eagle. It's not much bigger than one though. It's a little bit bigger, but not much. But the, the the gun placements on it are kind of horrible. Uh, <laughs> they're so far they're out on the front of the nacelle. Yeah. I'm not a fan of that. It was supposed to be my pirate ship. It's got all the necessary equipment for pirating. Like it's got enough slot. That's the first ship with enough slot to get scanners, manifest scanners, warrant scanners, hatch breakers. Huh? Yeah. Are so you planet number? number. <laughs> I painted it red, I put, you know, um, I give it a good pirate name, I don't know what it is off the top of my head right now, but I give it a good pirate name, I put pirate skulls all over it, I took it out and I'm like, okay, it's got to be engineered. What I want to do is I want to do the modifications that makes your weapons cause malfunctions on ship modules. I want to I wanna add that to it, but I don't have all the engineers on lock to set that up properly yet. Jumps. Yeah, when you're near the star, it causes everything else to go darker because it's supposed the star is creating too much extra light that your, I guess, helmet or cockpit filters it all out. Yeah. It's the light now, from I the star. Notice, yeah, I did notice one thing is yeah. when I was playing on that one training scenario that when the cockpit gets blown out, your HUD is actually is actually generated on the cockpit. Yeah. So you could you could see where it was broken and you couldn't see the HUD. You couldn't see your targeting. My question is, how does that affect the view when you're near a star? Oh, I don't know. Because in theory, the cockpit shouldn't be able to protect you anymore. Although you are supposedly wearing a headset or a, a helmet at that point, so yeah, you wouldn't be totally unprotected. Otherwise, you'd be dead. Any beam towards your cockpit should instantly kill you at that point. Yeah. And in theory, any explosion or shot at you should kill you right then. Okay, hold on. Let's get up here. Let's get around this way from the star for a moment. Yeah. Let's drop out. 
we're gonna make this an event. <laughs> the center of the galaxy. It is only uh three point four six. Four six. Three point four six light years away. Alright, you want me to drop out first? Yeah, because I can actually find you easier than you can find me. Alright. Raise your shields before you drop out of super cruise because it makes the charge faster. That way I don't run into you. Oops. Wrong button. Alright. The shields charge faster in super cruise. run you over at the last inch. Ah, I turned it all on. Alright, there you go. It takes it about 10, 15 seconds before they start charging. Shields online. Alright, Now here's up. the thing. I'm, I'm only doing that because we're dropping out of Super Cruise and I don't want to run into you. Yeah. But before we jump, we do want those off. Yeah. Because if you hit it, you do not want to get baked. Alright. Alright, dropping out. Alright, I locked onto your wake. We can Okay, you can see a few stars here. Yeah, it's completely obscured. I don't. I thought I'd be seeing it more than we are. I'm surprised we haven't seen it as much as we have. Yeah. Okay. Last. <laughs> What's this? I said you're upside down to me. Where are you? Which way are you facing? Oh, you're facing that way. I'm, I want to smack you with my nose. on my ships now. Do you keep red ones? Yeah. Huh. Actually, I'm not that... Oh, look at my screen. You can see the size comparisons because we're really close to each other. Uh-huh. distributor on. I'm going to turn oh, my no. shield generator off. I'm going to turn my heat sink on and try not to blow it out. I've only got one left. Do you have a heat sink launcher? Uh, miss. Yes. Okay, turn it on and know where your button is. Do not lose them. You can't make new ones. I don't think I will need it, but... 
Because yeah. <laughs> remember, when we now for me it's more dangerous because we're going to have to pull a hard turn. Yeah. And I would recommend. I we might. What I would think that we might want to do is instead of being throttled up, when we enter super cruise, throttle back. Yeah. That way you won't run into it. Because I do. Because I know these things are very hard to see. Yeah. Oh, so this I one would, won't be uh, hard to see at all. This one will no, not. We be. won't be able to. We won't be able to see much else. Well, we're going to have a hard time knowing which way to go. So what I'm saying yeah. is, my recommendation is, as you're charging your, right as you're charging the Super Cruise, pull your throttle back to zero. Okay. That way, when we come out, we won't hit it. All right. At least that's the theory, anyway. Because I'm going to have, a, for me, it's more dangerous because of this whale I'm flying. Oh yeah. All right. Charging the drive. Frame shift drive I'm here. Charging. Charging up. Here we go. Ready to engage. In. Hit the button. In. Three. Ready. Two. One. Engage. All right. Now to the unknown. Yep. I don't see anything in the center either. Nope, I don't. Well, there's a... Alright, there we are. Okay, I'm going to pull away from this so I don't hit it. I, I don't know which way to go. Alright. Let's see if I can figure out which way is away. Okay, that looks safe. <laughs> that looks safe. Actually, it shows up on your radar as a star. Yeah, I know, but I gotta make sure that I don't fly towards the exclusion zone. Yeah. I can't really tell where that's at. Well, if I was gonna hit it, I'd have done did it. So, I think I'm good. Let's bump this sucker. What new astronomical is thingy discovered? There's another star here. There is a very close... Uh, I don't know, it looks like a white... Okay, there it is. There it is. Sagittarius A star. Supermassive black hole at the center of the galaxy. of it. Uh-huh. I scanned it too. What's its partner here? This is... Oh! Ooh! We gotta scan that! The center! Oh! I bet that's a tourist thingy. You I do can... realize that that's a beacon, right? We're gonna have to drop out to do that. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I can see the I can see the exclusion um, line now. Yeah, so can I. All right, I'm 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 headed towards it. I'm gonna overshoot. Oh, there it goes. Okay. Whoa, that was a big exclusion zone. Yeah, that's why I said to be, because it's really hard to see that thing. It does not take much to get disoriented. No, it does not. It is big. I'm getting close, I'm gonna slow down. This is probably a one of those tourist mission destination uh, beacons. Yep. If they wanted you to come here, this is where they. If you came, if, if a mission came here, this is where it would give you to go. I would not be surprised to see ships here. Yep, whole batch of them too. I'm gonna scan this bugger anyway.
Okay. By the way, so what does it say here? A center. Sagittarius A is a popular destination for explorers and travelers. It is a supermassive black hole of the type found in most spiral and elliptical galaxies. Uh, radio emissions including Transmission. its existence were first detected by Carl Jansky. Jansky. We do realize that we're at a super crew is very, very close. Yeah, it should be okay. Switch to camera. Oh, camera view here. Wow. That sucker is big. E the area around us is sort of fish eye. Fish eye, uh. Distorted a little bit by it. Well, technically, you're not able. To, the idea is you're not supposed to be able to see it. Yeah. The light, you're seeing behind it. So I like the fact that they did use a fisheye for that effect. That was actually a pretty good idea. Because yeah. in theoretically, that's what you should get. Yeah. You're not supposed to be able to actually see the black hole itself. Of course, just sitting here this close to it, honestly, it should slurp you in and turn you into a fisheye. But anyway. Not technically. Actually, you Where are you? I am right in front of the beacon. Okay, let me then get close to you here. I'll get a picture of both of our ships next to it here. Mm. That way you can get a picture. And we got company. Yeah, there's a bunch of ships out here. I wouldn't be surprised to see pirates out here. Yeah. Okay, let's not stop it. Just scan me. That. You're moving. I'm not moving. Well, there's a bunch of ships here. There's a heat sink here. Somebody's popping heat sinks. The... Oh, that was you. Okay, hold on. Carl... Charlie Johnson? Adder, adder, adder in the center. Charlie Johnson. Are you facing the center? Which angle are you facing? I okay, am um, scanned. scanned. Let's see, what do you have in your What do you have in your cargo? I'm not carrying anything. Pirates all the way out here? Seriously? You're near, you're at a nav beacon. They actually are at every one of these. I'm gonna turn, so I'm, I'm gonna turn so I'm facing the... Oh, I had it sideways. I had it sideways so you can see it's parked next to it. Oh, alright. Let me turn back to the beacon then. I'm targeting the beacon. Just watch because you're really close to my front bow, so. Yeah. I, I'm literally just a few feet off your off your hull, so watch it. Alright. Uh, if I were to spin to the left, I would smack. Yeah, if I were to, if I were to spin to the left, I would smack you. Alright. Uh, now I gotta figure out how to get this UI to give. I'm trying to figure out how to get a screenshot. Okay. Go to the camera view. Down full. See, stabilizers off. Ship controls. Oh, that's a good view right there. I don't want to take it in case these people are doing idiotic stuff. Alright. And, uh, the 
this one's a good one, I think. How do you get the UI to go away? Uh, I know in my controls it's Y, but you're, you're using a HOTOS. Uh, I'm going to have to bind it. Probably not bound. Okay, free camera. Let's see, there's got to be a hide UI in here. Mm. Toggle HUD, okay. Got a picture of both of our ships. Uh, in front of Sagittarius A. <laughs> wow. Thanks. Huge. Okay, now I got a picture. Sagittarius A, and we're going to go back to Rusla. <laughs> I don't think it'll let you plot that course, will it? Or will it? Let's see. It's red. Let me plot it. It's too far. Yeah. Okay, I get a pull it back. Is let me see how far. 25, so you need to be five short. Um, look for the Eagle Nebula because that, um, whoops. The Eagle Nebula is about five out, so let's see. Actually, there's something here. I might be able to go to. There's a couple of close-in ones. I got a couple of ones. There's some nebulas that we've already been to. Let's see. This one might be close enough. Hold on. Let me see if this is good in there. I'm getting scanned like crazy out here. I uh, know. If we had any cargo, they would be going bananas on us. Eagle. I'm checking something. The Eagle Nebula. I've got one at 20. Nope, that's too far. Hold on. That was not close enough. It's a nebula we've already been to, but it's kind of at an angle. Let's see if it was kind of toward Colonia. Hold on. Let me see if I can find a better spot. Ah, what about that one? We haven't been to that nebula either. Uh, let's see. Let's take a look at you. I'm not sure which nebula this is, but it's a nebula. We haven't been here. We weren't, we didn't come through here. Cat's eye. Cat's paw. Uh, which is cat's eye or cat's paw? What is this? Uh, I don't see names. Show nebula names, yes. Cat's paw. Okay. Cat's paw. Uh, let's see. Let's pick a, pick a star somewhere in the middle here. Uh, let's see. How about this guy? 20, oh, 2474, so I need to boot back just a little bit further, just shy of it. 2372, uh, let's see, 20, 233, 20, 92, almost there. 20, Okay, I need a little bit further. Nineteen something. Okay, was there anything nearby? Nope, but it's not far from the bubble. All right, let me lock onto this. Okay. Plot a route. See if it'll do a route. 
This is maximum range here, just about. If it locks on, I'll, I'll let you knock onto my nav beacon. And you can lock it in and put a bookmark on it. Just a few moments while I get coordinates from the Nava computer. <laughs> I'm through space ain't like Dustin Cross, boy. Yeah. Trust me, you, I know, I've bounced off stars before. All right, I've got a lock. It is on my ship. 571 jumps. All right, lock onto my target. Your target. All right. Um. Whoa, whoa, whoa! What do you mean, hull integrity compromise? Did I run into you? Um, you might have. Something hit me. I'm gonna raise my shields at least till I get ready to go. I don't see the marker for. Lock onto my thing. target first. I may I my uh, proximity thing is going off. All right. Um should be far enough for me not to hit anything. Okay, I've walked on. There's the <laughs> hell star. Into me. I must have walked you. I'm locked on to the center still. I'm not... Can I lock on to the target? Yeah, disengage your, disengage your lock and, and nav to the center. You gotta, you gotta clear it. Lock onto something else and clear it. Sometimes it won't unlock something. You gotta unlock it and lock it. It's weird. Let me do that. Well, target me. Run around. Wait, you. Well, no, use your nav panel. Just, just, just select me from your nav panel. On your gun. See, like, look, look on my screen, and you'll see what I'm targeting, what I'm using. I use this a lot. This is very good. I use it a lot these days. Okay, I got you. Okay, now, target my target. You should get the Stellane, Wimping, B1, B9, something. Okay. Ah, finally. All right. Did you get it? Yeah. Now, you only you, you need to plot a course. And don't forget to bookmark it either. We really could just set something 5,000 5, 5, light years away and then, you know what, maybe that's better. Lock on, let me, you know what, maybe I should lock on to something about five to 6,000 light years away. And then when we get there, we'll be able to lock directly onto Bresla. Oh, um, I already locked on to this and did a bookmark. Are you good? Okay, that's fine. That's fine. We'll do that. All right. All right so you got a bookmark. You got to don't forget to set your course to make sure that you would get all scoopable stars. Yeah. It's going to make you have to recalculate, but you'll need to replot that's that. That's not a very far jump. That doesn't look that far. That's actually pretty close. No, no, no. The, the thing I'm locked on to is... Oh, never mind. I know what's wrong. I did this wrong. Hold on. I did this wrong. You're locked onto my first jump star. You're not oh. locked onto my destination star. Uh. You're locked onto the first jump. Okay, uh. hold on. Let me, let me, let me clear that. I know what happened. Oh, 
valve on. I gotta redo that. Crap, my yeah. bad. Whoops. Raise um. your shields. Raise your shields for the moment. It's kind of cluttery out here. Yeah. Don't jump with your shields up, but raise your shields. Because it's kind of iffy out here. I don't want to bother fixing us and repairing us until we get away from this thing. Because we might take damage just jumping away from where we are. Alright, let me try that plot again. Well, since I got a plot again, do you want me to try what I was going to talk about? Yeah. Just do about five? Okay, so let me do it that way. Uh, Target what you want to lock on to and then... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, know, I know what I did wrong. I got it. I realized what I did after I did it. I need to I need to not plot the course is essentially what I need to do. Yeah. I just need to target it. Oh, this is dense in here. God, if we still had the mug, do you know how much jump how many times we've been jumped already? Oh God. <laughs> Yes. I, I, you know, I think it, maybe it's a good thing I didn't pick up those distillery things. In, uh, uh, otherwise, otherwise yeah, we'd be otherwise. getting getting jumped left and right by all these guys. Uh huh. Okay. Please cease your unauthorized scan immediately. Sending those messages. Another empty cargo hold. My children will go hungry tonight. You're a shitty dad. Go get a go get a proper <laughs> job. This is not this is not the trading ship you're looking for. Did you seriously say that? Yes. <laughs> oh, God. I need five thousand dollars. How many light years do I need? What? How many light years do I need? I need. There's 20, 25. So I need about 5,000, don't I? Yeah. I'm trying to figure out how far out I need to be. Well, hmm. is there anything interesting between here and there? Hmm. I'm to stop it. Got it. And the thing is, coming into this area, when Super Cruise, we don't see any other ships. And yet, there's a whole bunch uh, of ships jumping in. Uh-huh, I know. It drives me bananas. Oh. That might be too These far should to be like, To be a proper light space sim, those ships should, be, should be persistent in the world. Yeah. Okay, this is Nebula City over here. Hmm. Well, that's a lot of Nebula. There's a lot of Nebula up in here. All right, what do we got? Uh, trying to decide how, just trying to pick a spot. How about right here on this arm? How about this? We've been here before. You okay with us picking a place we've been already? I've got a marker already here. It's about 17,000, it's about halfway. Yeah, it's fine. It gets us most of the way there. Lock on to it so I can find, lock no, on. No, and... well, I'm, I gotta target it. Yeah, target it, and then um, I'll flip the route. Okay, it's targeted, it's seven, <laughs> 17,808 light years away. Alright. Now, now you should be able to plot a... What do you think about going there? About where it's located? Oh. Big? Now, we've um, been there before. 
We've been there. But it's pretty, pretty. Yeah, we've been there. And then Oops. it's pretty much. Uh... Oops, like. You know what? Either we've been there or I've been there. Calculating the jumps. <laughs> My fuel gauge is all blue because it's like, uh, yeah, that's gonna take everything you got, and you're not still not gonna make it. <laughs> all right, all right. Oh, this is you um, get a, you get a, one of the nuts. This is a nebula we've been to before, then. Yes. You okay with that, or do you want something else? That's fine. Uh, uh, I've got the local jump start plotted. And that way we can jump from there and then go to Col then go back to the um the bubble from there. Yeah. All right. I mean, Colonia is still really far away. And we still got a long way to go. Why are you pointed the other direction? Hmm. Are you pointing toward the next jump star? No. Okay. Was... Point toward. All right, I'm point toward towards... it. Make sure I'm the... turning the to point towards it. And uh -oh. what? It's right on the edge of the black hole. We're we're gonna be jumping. We're gonna be jump. We're gonna be high waking. So, yeah. so we're gonna be high waking. So we'll be fine. Yeah. Either that or our high wake will sling us around and we'll wind up in another galaxy. <laughs> yeah. All right. So. All right. Okay. Drop your shields. Keep your power distributor on. Turn on your heat sink launcher and have it ready in case you get hot. We shouldn't have a problem. Hey. Uh, God damn it. Hitting that. Well, just come to a stop. I'll pull up next to you. What a thing, big. <laughs> uh huh. You at a full stop? Yeah. Wow, 
Wow. Okay. I wasn't taking any heat. Temperature's I got warm, down but... now. Temperature's dropping. Ooh. I saw sparks flying. Uh, you could have popped your heat sink. Yeah. Alrighty I've then. Got, I've got three <laughs> limpets. I've got three limpets, but I think our holes are good enough right now that we don't really need them. 517 jumps. Wow. <sighs> okay. Uh. Yeah. Drive so everybody, thanks for joining us on our final leg of the trip. Again, as I said, sorry for just not being a live stream. We'll see you guys next time. Keep an eye out for our next live stream. Alright, next star. I did scan back there. Crap. I did. Okay. Are you going to finish up your stuff so you can finish the video or? Yeah. Yep. All right. So. I'll wait. Everybody. I'll wait here. Thank you for watching. This wasn't a live stream today. This was a re pre-recorded video. Probably won't be editing any of this. But uh, thanks for watching. And also, you know, if you've liked the video, if you like our live streams, give us a like and consider subscribing. That way you get a notification you know, every time we put up a new video or, or a new stream. And we have like other people that do videos on this channel. From the guy that runs Gamers Bay that I work that I do videos for, he comes on some from time to time and does a uh, new video for the channel. And I will eventually have a new closure professor out. So uh, thanks for watching, and consider checking out Gamers Bay over on Google Plus, uh, where I've got the uh, the next videos for the uh, retro gaming series up over there on Gamers Bay uh, covering games for the Atari 2600. So, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Hey.